Hi, I'm Joseph Rittenhouse, your financial educator, your lifestyle idea guy. I am in Ho Chi Minh City in southern Vietnam. A lot of Americans know Ho Chi Minh as uh, Saigon. It's one of the major cities in Vietnam. I'm going to be hanging out here for a couple of months. I've got a hundred grand in the bank right now and I'm, I'm waiting to reinvest that back into rental real estate. That's how I'm able to live this kind of lifestyle is because about two years ago, I'm coming up on my two year anniversary, I was a bus driver and then bus driver instructor in the United States and I purchased enough rental real estate and partnered with enough people that I was able to live off of my, my rental income, have enough income from the property to, to be able to stop working, to be able to retire. So I like to not only maximize my investment in money, but also I'd like to live in interesting places, learning interesting things, and pretty much just enjoying the whole world as much as possible. And we'll be going back to the United States here in a little bit. There's some other things I'd like to do. Maybe I'd like to get a little bit more hands-on with rental real estate and not be so passive because let's face it, just making money is not the only uh, fun thing. I love languages. I'm taking Vietnamese language courses right now and I'm, I love in learning the little differences between the Vietnamese culture and the other cultures around the, around the area like like Chinese, Cambodian, Laotian, Thai. I like, I like to really slow down and really enjoy the small differences between each culture so I don't like to travel too fast. This video is about perspective. Since I don't need to work like like my family did growing up, you know, middle class family working nine to five every day, five days a week. I still have to work, I still have to manage my money, but I don't have to work in the traditional sense of getting up every morning to an alarm clock. I still have to sit down every week managing my in income and expenses and keeping track of that and planning. I plan at least the next two years out what I'm gonna do with my cash and about how long until we sell a property what should I do about my house, and I, I need to make phone calls, emails, the right emails and things like that because I still need to manage my money. I'm basically like an asset manager. So I'm going to stay here for in Vietnam for maybe a couple of months. I'm waiting for some, some emails to come through and then I'll take some, some next steps with purchasing some rental real estate in, in the United States. Perspective. Because I don't have to work, I have an unusual perspective. I get to sit back and watch people, not only here in Vietnam and in China and in the countries I've been to recently, but also in the United States. I get to step back and just watch people online and watch them in their daily lives do their work, do their education, do and their leisure time. And I get to I get to ask myself what's going on here and what's happening in our lives and what are we doing. I was thinking back to many of the some famous people that we know about that were either in jail for a couple of years or they were in a, a prison camp, a war camp, or they went off to be alone for a couple of years. So I think it's Tolle, Eckhart Tolle, T-O-L-L-E. What did he say that he sat like in a park, on a park bench for like two years and then that's when he really started to write his stuff. So. There's been many times where people have actually separated themselves from the normal routine of daily life and then they come back and do something very great. What it is, I don't know. I think it's that there's a, a different perspective on life. And sometimes you have to shake yourself up and get out of the daily routine and ask yourself, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And where am I going? I watch people doing their work every day and I notice patterns. I notice that people who work every day, they're under a certain kind of a stress, constant stress. The work, the kids, getting money for the kids. And I think people that are under this daily middle class stress, they're easy to manipulate. It's easy to sell products to them. It's easy to make them go to your amusement park. Yeah, maybe they can get a quick fix, take the kids to the amusement park and that'll make the kids shut up, that'll make the kids happy. Or maybe if I go to this bar, I'll get a quick, you know, get some drinks, I'll be happy. Maybe if I go on this quick uh, trip and I, you know, follow this itinerary and I do all these things and take all these pictures and post it all, 
on Instagram or Facebook, then I'll be happy. And I noticed that it's easier to sell this kind of idea to people who are under the stress of the middle class life. You can manipulate them more. You can sell more products to them. I also notice when I step back and I watch people working that these people who are under the constant stress of the middle class life, they, one of the mistakes they make is they think that just because they're doing a lot, waking up, going to work, going to lunch, oh, I've got my suit on, my shirt on, and got my skirt and dress on, and I'm got my, got my glasses on, and I'm making phone calls, that they're actually accomplishing things. Don't get this wrong, I, I respect the hard work, I have to work hard myself, and I work hard now, but just in a different way. It's reading, writing, planning, thinking. But just because you work hard or it looks like you're working hard does not mean you're really uh, accomplishing things. I think it was Brian Tracy said that people mistake action for activity. So just because I sit here and I see people, they're doing their daily routine and it looks like they're doing a lot, be careful because that doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting anywhere in life. Getting where, well, that's different for every single person. For me, getting somewhere was having the freedom to do what I want with who I want, whenever I want. And like for me, this is what I wanted, to be traveling around the world, enjoying the world. So to me, going, just looking like I'm doing a lot, waking up in the morning and driving my car to work and clocking in and clocking out and meeting people on the weekends, I noticed that it looks like I was doing something. I, mean, I was getting somewhere, but you're actually not really getting anywhere because if you're not reading, planning, saving your money, getting that money to work for you, you're not really getting anywhere. So remember that activity, movement, looking like you're doing a lot does not actually mean you're getting anywhere. And so I get to see people doing that every day. I'm not to say that, oh, I'm so smart and I'm on a, I'm on a different level of life than these, these people, but I'll sit back in a cafe just sipping on my coffee thinking, good job, Joe, you saved your money and you worked hard, you, you um, deprived yourself of certain luxuries in the last couple of years so that you can have this big luxury now, which is enjoying the world. And I'll sit back drinking my coffee in a cafe and I'll see people and I'll think, they're doing too much. They don't need to do that much. They got the iPhone and they're flipping through the Facebook and they're meeting with the friends at lunch and I'm thinking, you don't have to do all that. If you could just stop for a second, if you could make a plan, save your money, then you can actually really get somewhere. It bothers me because I meet people and they're like, wow, Joe, you know, you're so, you're so free and they talk about it like I'm lucky or I, God just gave this to me and, I, and it was easy and I, I didn't have to work hard. It's like, no, this, to live this kind of financially free lifestyle took a lot of hard work, but it was slow, boring work that doesn't look like the usual work that people are used to. It doesn't look like this work where you get up and ride my scooter and drive in my car on the freeway back there in California. That wasn't the effective work. It was the behind the scenes things, the reading, the, the planning, the slow saving of the money, the investing of the money. A, a thing I also get to see traveling in these popular foreign, these tourist areas outside of Los Angeles and uh, United States is I get to see people on vacation. And this one is kind of depressing because, hey, you gotta go on vacation. I, I totally understand that you need to go on vacation even if it's two days three days you got to get out and at least touch another culture touch another place but I get to sit here for weeks and weeks and weeks and watch people come through with their camera and they're packed like they're going to Mars on a mission to Mars they've got all this stuff their camera they're ready to take their Instagram pictures and the the thing that bothers me in my heart is they're not really getting to to enjoy, for example, the the beauty of Vietnam. And to me, what is the Vietnamese culture, for example, let me just pick one culture, is that here, com as compared to what I know in, in Los Angeles, in California, in the United States, is here it's supposed to be more of a just a chill place. You're supposed to just go to the beach, 
drink a coffee, drink a tea, eat the healthier food here, go for a walk. And that's the blessing, that's the gift that Vietnam has for the world. So when I see tourists come through and they come through, um, you know, with an itinerary, a, a schedule, part of it bothers me because I, I see them and I think, well, I wish you could really just slow down and, and enjoy it. And the depressing thing about people going on vacations is they think it's just gonna, it's gonna make them happy. And I don't think they completely understand what they want. And uh, I wish they could slow down and really enjoy the cultures. Another perspective is on health and hunger and education. We live in one of the greatest times of uh, human history. Back in the United States, everyone's working, they're looking at the news, watching the television, they're so angry because people are starving and people are dying and people are trying to put their hands in my pockets. But we live in one of the greatest times in, in human history. Never before has there been so much education available to so many people around the world. This hotel right down the street that I'm staying at has 35 megabyte a second internet. That's more than we have at home in the United States where I live. And uh, with that internet access, I can read anything. I can read anything, just about anything that humans have ever written. I can watch just about any movie or documentary or video. I could download William Durant's History of Civilization. I haven't read that yet though. But you have, even here in Vietnam, you have access to almost all the knowledge of the world. If I were to break my arm right now, I'd be in a hospital like that with medical technology that was not even existent 100 years ago. If, the, if I felt that the medical service here, the dentistry, the, the ability to fix my broken arm was not good enough, I could be on an airplane and back in the United States within 12, 18 hours. So education, health, the food here, I have everything I, I would ever want to eat here. All the food of the world is here, from all the different cultures it's here. So I live, I live better now than a king lived 200 years ago, 300 years ago. We're not dying, we're not starving, we're not cut off from education or opportunities. There's more opportunity now than ever before in the world. People here in Vietnam or Cambodia, they can go online and they can make friends with someone in the United States and find some, some investment opportunity like, like that. Just go online and it's, and it's done. They don't have to actually go to the United States. They can use a, a computer. A, they can even use a cell phone in a park and be talking to someone in the United States. So change your perspective back up. And I, I really want people to, to realize that actually we live in one of the greatest nicest most beautiful times of, of human history and it it upsets me when I go back to the United States and people are so so upset and so angry and so bitchy and I'm like we have it so nice nowadays it's it's you got to change your perspective of belonging to groups I because I kind of live outside of the usual middle class life I don't have some of the, I don't do some of the things that people do back in the United States. I don't need to belong to groups so much as, as I feel like people do in the United States. Back, back home, a man will go to work, he'll, he'll go home, he'll watch his sports and maybe he's kind of tired from work but he can watch his sports and he can root for his hero. He can live vicariously through the, 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 the athlete, that can be his hero. But there's certain things that I don't have because I don't need them. I don't need to belong to groups. I don't need to. I don't watch sports very much. I, I do like to watch a big game between two of the best teams at the very end of a season of any sport, just about. But I don't need to be a part of a, a team, a sports team. I don't wave any flags for any religions or. Or countries. I love the United States. I love, I love Vietnam. I, but I don't wave any flags. I don't have 
let me pick an example of something that's regional like tattoos in America there's a certain type of tattoo that is cool right now and there was a certain type of tattoo that was cool 10 years ago and there's a certain type of tattoo which is behind the head or on the leg which is popular now in China and then here in Vietnam there's a different type of tattoo in America the popular tattoo is the writing where it's like a, a paragraph or a saying or something like that and I don't like to do things like this because it it dates you, it puts you in a certain decade. Based on the tattoo you see on someone, it puts them into a certain decade. You can see they got that tattoo probably in the 90s or the teens or the or the 20 teens. And also it lets you know what area they come from. If someone from China goes to America, they're gonna have tattoos on their neck, on the behind their ear. And I don't like to do that because I don't consider my I don't wanna be identified as being a certain person from a certain place and I don't want the group to influence me in that in that certain place. I don't want to be considered a, a Los Angeles person, a United States person. And I don't want to carry just that image of a Los Angeles person or United States person with me anywhere I go in the world. And I don't, I don't want to go to China and be labeled, you know, literally labeled as someone from that area. So that's why I don't, I don't, join groups, I don't wave flags, I don't get tattoos, don't want to be part of groups. In different parts of the world, the countries are going through different stages of social development. In the United States, we're pretty fair and balanced, I, I, I think, I would hope so, to all the different types of people in our country. I met someone from Taiwan, this girl, and she just had to tell me about how cool gay people are. And she said it in such a way that it was almost like to her, being gay or being associated with gay people was like a cool thing. And that bothered me because I, I think they were using gay as 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 an identity or something it was it was part of being a, a, a group they were hijacking homosexuality to be to be cool and I, I didn't like that and I didn't like that and I noticed that in certain areas say for example if I go to China or Taiwan being gay is a cool new thing and I understand that China and Taiwan are going through certain stages of their development of their society and in America being homosexuals at a different a different stage of acceptance but also because I travel I have a different perspective and I go to countries like Thailand and, and here in Vietnam and you know being homosexual is we've been homosexual we've been gay for thousands of years and uh, here it's especially like in Thailand it's not a big deal it's nothing that you would be cool with so it bothers me when I go to diff the point of this is, it bothers me when I go to different parts of the world and I see that certain people will do certain things to be cool in that area. Because what's cool in one area is not cool and doesn't hold the same value in another area. And I notice this because I have, going back to the whole perspective thing, a different perspective on, on the cultures, on the countries, and on the society. So, I don't like to identify with with, with groups like that and I don't hijack homosexuality going around to different cultures going to it'd be like me going to Thailand and saying hey everyone I am gay because it's cool they would look at me like I'm weird because they're at a different stage of of society a different stage of acceptance acceptance so I don't I don't want to be part of any movements, if that's, that's the point I'm trying to get at. I don't want to be part of any movements or any groups. The whole big bad other people thing, big bad other people. If you're an American, the big bad other people are, is China and Russia. But if you meet these people from these countries, they are so nice and they actually really like Americans. And this thing was so irritating recently on, on the internet about 
you got to be careful with the news, the television, the... They try to scare you because that's their job, is to entertain you, to keep you looking at them so they can make money off of you and sell you products and keep your eyes glued to their screen, keep your eyes glued to their webpage. And right now the thing is, wow, the, the Chinese yen, they're going to try to replace the, the US dollar as a standard currency in the world. But you got to step back from this change of perspective. Okay, so say the Chinese yen is the world's currency. We don't use the US dollar in all the, the countries around the world anymore. Then the Chinese would be the bad people. And then if the Chinese yen was the world's currency, then the English would come in and it'd be the pound. And then we'd say the English people are the bad people. So you've got to step out and look at this pattern of they're always trying the people selling products, selling, people selling web pages and videos and news programs. They're always trying to keep you in a circle of fear, and you're just a dog chasing your tail, always afraid of the bad person. And my perspective is I'm outside of this. I go to China. I go to these different countries, and I think. Wow, these people here, they're just living their life and they're not thinking about hurting American people or dominating the American people. So I have a different perspective on it. So just like a company, a cell phone company, might try to sell you a phone or a company tries to sell you a product to make you happy in America, you also can't sell me this idea that there's a big bad other country because I, I come out and I go to the other countries and they're just people living their lives. You can't just call them a big bad country that's one big bad dangerous thing because they're not they're people just like us and they're living their life Vietnamese people and Russian people they're not they're not thinking about conquering the United States actually if you gave them a tourist visa I'm, I'm sure they'd be on the first plane going to LA right now because they love LA Chinese love LA Russians love LA they love our culture they appreciate the contributions that the Westerners have made to the world and actually I, I would like for us to appreciate more the contribution that the um, Russians or the Chinese have made to the world because their cultures are each adding something special that uh, maybe the Americans don't emphasize so much so the other people are not the are not the big bad scary countries there's a lot of things that really do not matter worrying about the economy, worrying about politics. There's so many useless things that really do not have any impact on your overall success. I'm just gonna assume here that a lot of you would want to be financially independent, you'd like to have the freedom to travel, to be with your family all day if you want to, to go where you want with your family, right? That's, that's what I wanted and that's what I'm doing. So, let me remind you that the way I got here was not by watching the news, not by reading the newspaper. It was not by being angry at the president. It was not by being afraid of other countries. It was purely by focusing on my little world because that's what I am. I'm just a little guy. I'm insignificant. I'm not really important in the whole scheme of the whole world. And I realize that. I'm not the, I'm not the, I don't work for immigration in the United States. It's not my job to worry about the people illegally immigrating. That's not my job. If you want to be an immigra immigration officer or work for the immigration department in the United States, then go back to college, start over again, get your education, and then go do that job, and then do work on policy in that area. Don't bitch. Don't, don't get your mediocre job and then bitch about what people who who, what other people are doing that actually have that job in immigration or economists or governors or or presidents you didn't want to do that you wanted to sit around and hang out and drink your beers you didn't want to get into politics or economics so you don't get that option to really make decisions neither do I that's not my job and I didn't need to do that during my whole process of being a bus driver and then a bus driver instructor I almost never watched the news. I never read the newspaper. I was just focused on saving, reading books written by other successful real estate investors, planning, and in the period of just a few short years, about five years, I was able to not work anymore. 
if you've been bitching for 10 years, 20 years about the president, you might wanna, again, change your perspective, back up and look. Say, hey, what's, what's happening? I've been bitching for 10 years about the president and the governor and the state and the, and the Democrats and the Republicans. That's not really doing anything for your life. It didn't change your income one, one dollar. But what did change my income was slowing down, drinking the tea, writing out a plan on paper, reading a book, making a plan and following it. And in just a few short years, I was financially independent. Don't, you're just wasting your time watching the news, watching the, worrying about the president. You're spinning your wheels and wasting your time. Later, when you become that multi-multi-millionaire and you wanna go to parties and rub shoulders with important politicians and then you wanna have an influence on your local politics and government, then that's fine, go ahead and do it. But right now, I'm just realizing from my perspective, it's more important that I just focus on myself and not worry about things like that. Let's wrap it up with uh, people are shy. This is my perspective as being a retired person. I travel around and I, I see people doing their daily lives and going to work and doing their vacations and stuff like that. And, you know, even making this video, I make this video and I'm like, everyone has an iPhone 8 and they don't really use it for what it's capable of. I get my iPhone 5, this is the iPhone 5S, my old piece of crap phone. And I can do so much with this phone. I can make videos, write emails. I can even take pictures of documents and make PDFs with this phone, this 5S. The screen is broken right now. I can do everything that I need to do to be successful just with this phone right now. I have a different perspective. I see people with their iPhone 8. You know, if you, don't bother me when I'm making my videos. Go make your own videos with your iPhone 8 that you have. Sometimes I, I try to talk to people and people are funny. I'm funny. You're funny. We're, we're really shy. We're afraid that people are trying to hurt us. And we're afraid that people are trying to take things from us. And that's natural. That's totally natural. And every day I'm trying to fight my natural, shy tendencies. I'm trying to step out of my scared, nervous perspective of life. Someone said that our brains are scarce, but our society is abundant. My brain, my body still thinks it's living 10,000 years ago and that someone's gonna kill me today, someone's gonna kill my family, that I'm gonna run out of food tomorrow. And so I still have the tendency to be scared to protect myself from other people. I don't wanna tell you my, about my life and, and you don't wanna tell me about your life, but we don't live in that kind of world anymore. We live in an abundant world where if you see me over there drinking a coffee and it's kinda of like, man, this guy looks a little bit different. It's okay to go talk to me to ask me questions. And if I ask you questions about your life, I'm not trying to take your little bit of money. Let's face it, you're not, you're not that special, you're not that rich. I'm not that special, I'm not that rich. I'm no Tom Hanks, I'm Tom Cruise. I'm no Tom Cruise. I'm not a multi, multi-millionaire. I'm not that important of a person. So if you come and talk to me about what I'm doing in my life, I'm a little bit more, more open because I'm trying to get ideas from other people. I, I wanna get a different perspective. And I know that there's people around here today, right now, I know there's people right over there that are much more smarter than me. They have a different perspective on life, just like I might have a different perspective on life than you or someone that I see in a cafe. So I'm always trying to not be a shy person, not be afraid of talking to other people, not afraid to get outside of my comfort zone. I wanna get outside and get a different perspective because we're running out of time I'm 38 years old I'm already past midlife midlife is not 50 years old most of us only live to be what 80 years old so if you're 50 years old you're already already past midlife and I, I realize that me right now being 38 I'm already at the middle of my life and I don't have a lot of time to really experience life completely so I need to I've done a good job so far of getting out of my perspective my family's perspective is a middle-class family. Now I can see a little bit of a bigger picture of what's out there. And now I wanna change my perspective even more. So if you're a shy person, maybe open up a little bit, ask more questions. Don't be so 
so shy, use that phone that you have, that iPhone 8 that you paid so much money for, read, learn, ask questions, watch videos, not just the same old entertainment videos, but maybe educational videos, videos from different kinds of people. I'm gonna go to the cafe right now and do some work. I'm gonna make some more videos here in a little bit talking about the Vietnamese language and culture. And I wanted to make a video about imagination and the importance imagination has played in my life. So I'll be looking out for those videos. And from Ho Chi Minh City, uh, goodbye, have a good day.